Okay, troops, let's go. Up and at them. Arnold, please, it's Monday morning. It's only the warning bell, Arnold. Let's set an example. There are young minds to move. Oh, you got to be kidding. Maybe I'll have another cup Please. of coffee. Black, yeah. green. chance of getting divorced. So the question is, why bother? Michael. You know, Miss Mellon, I got up this morning and I asked my third wife the same question. Stacy, <laughs> <laughs> I really want to have kids someday, but I don't want to do that unless I'm married. Do what? Well, I don't blame you, Stacy, but kids aren't going to save a marriage. What do you people think it takes to make a marriage work? Love. What? Love. Oh, yeah. it takes much more than love. Like what? Honesty. Communication. <laughs> Sexuality. Oh. Linda's engaged. Oh, that's right. We have a bride to be in the class. Yeah. You set a date? Well, we've um, we've set a date to set a date. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a big decision. So, who is this future Mr. Barrett? His name is Doug. He lives in Chicago. Oh, that's a long-distance relationship. It's yeah. tough, isn't it? Well, it isn't easy. But when you're engaged, you just have this um feeling of, of destiny. You become your, your total person. Uh. <laughs> All right, go me. on. Don't let it just go on. And you don't have to worry about boys. Oh, he's dead, man. Oh, <laughs> so cute, Spicoli. Ignore them. So who are you bringing Saturday night? I think I'll go stag. To your own birthday party? That's terrible. Why don't you call Doug? I'll, I'll see if he can make it. You know, it's weird. Hmm. I mean, we're best friends and everything, and I still haven't met him. Well, you know how med school is. He's always busy with some operation or something. But he's rich. Can he just fly down for the day? <laughs> Stace, I cannot bother him every time we have a party. You know what? The party's at my house. Why don't I call and invite him? I really don't think he can make it. Linda, I mean, I know Doug's wonderful and everything. But how can you have a relationship with someone you never see? It's a lot better than having a relationship with someone you never want to see. Linda, you were great in Melon Head's class. I love that sexuality thing. It's a very special feeling. So true. So, in one sentence, please, summarize the main plank of the Monroe Doctrine. Mr. Gillis? Mr. Hand? Did you say Mr. Hand? That's a statement, but it doesn't fully summarize the Monroe Doctrine. The Monroe Doctrine? Oh, now you have worked the subject into your reply. But I still need just a teensy bit more analysis. Um. Uh. 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 uh now you are regressing, Mr. Gillis. Perhaps my luck will be better with you, Mr. Sincasio. Dude, you got handed. <laughs> Where'd he go, Gillis? You ever think of joining the debating team? When Hand gives me the hairy eyeball, I completely eat my shower. Hey, it's not Hand's fault he looks like that. What do you mean? You don't know? I don't know. 
hand has a glass eye. No. Yeah. It's so obvious. I thought you guys knew that. You lost it in the war. Yuck. A glass eye? Yeah, he lost a real one in some kind of commando raid on Japan in World War II. You know, he does kind of tilt his head and stare at you like this. Yeah, yeah. And did you notice that when he reads, he reads with one eye? That's not glass. It isn't? No, it's plastic. 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 They don't make eyes out of glass anymore. I know, my cousin's an ophthalmologist. Hey, lady! Stacy! You're looking very intellectual. Hi, Jamone. Hi, Stacy. You buying glasses? Now, she's shopping for farm machinery. Hi, Mark. I was just trying these on. How do I look with glasses? Perfect. <laughs> Celinda. The word is that we may actually get to meet Doug. What's he like? Oh, he's great. I mean, I haven't really seen him yet. Show him the picture. Oh, this is great. So, what are you, about 13 here? Damone, you'll always be 13. Thank you. Oh. And so now, class, tomorrow we're actually going to enter the wonderful world of frogs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A question? Yeah. About biology? Totally. Go for it. Okay. If someone, like, has a big eye, can you tell it you're not bogus? Why did I forget to put mine in this morning? <laughs> Actually, Jeff, I'm not an expert on prosthetic eyes, but I would imagine that they have been perfected to the point where you'd have to look pretty closely to tell. All right, class, tomorrow. Jeff, Jeff. What's going on? Is there a student with a glass eye? I should know about that. Well, there's nobody in class. It's Mr. Hand. Arnold Hand? Yeah, that's the guy. The president sent Mr. Hand on a secret mission to the South Pacific in World War II. He was charging across an open field, dodging enemy fire, when boom, he stepped on a landmine. By the time they sewed him back together, there was only one piece missing. No. Later, Mr. V. I'm telling you, Hamilton, there is no Doug. She made it up. Simone, why are you telling me this? I just thought you might have a personal interest. Well, I don't. Fine. Hey, Simone. Okay, let's hear your theory. Just so I can prove how wrong you are. Okay, A, no one has actually seen Doug in the flesh, not even your sister. And B, I analyzed that old picture she shows around. There's no report there. No matter, the guy is probably your cousin. That's it? That's your proof? Come on, you're crazy. Listen, I know Linda Barrett. She wouldn't make up a story like that. Hey. Come on, you don't even pay for him anyway. Why don't we just put it this way? Arnold, the kids say you have a glass eye. Oh, that's good, Hector. Really, I know I'm all for the direct approach. Wait, what if it's true? Hector? Leslie? How are you? Fit. How's your third period class? My third period class is filled with self-indulgent drones. Arnold, the kids say you lost an eye in the war. So? Well, aren't you going to do anything to quell this rumor? No. Hi, Brad. Hi, Linda. Say, I know you're going to be busy, but do you think you could save a dance for me at the party? 
Look, I already told everyone that Doug can't make it. You said anything about Doug? Well, the reason is, he's busy. Fine. You sound like you don't believe me. I believe you. I don't get it. It's like all of a sudden my fiance has become item number one. Just calm down. Hey, maybe if everyone just had a chance to meet him, then he wouldn't be such a big mystery. All right. I'll ask him again if he can come. That's up to you. I'll ask him. Well, hey, if it's a problem. It's no problem. Doug will be there. He'll be there. Doug Jason, please. Uh, yeah, just a sec. Yeah, thanks. Hello? Hi, Doug, it's Linda. Linda? Uh, Linda who? Linda Barrett. Oh, right. Uh, uh, how'd you get my number? So when's Doug's plane coming in? I don't know. The plane may be delayed. How can you possibly know that? <laughs> Look who's here. Enjoy the show. Hi, Mark. Hi, Linda. Hi, Stacy. Great talk. Yeah? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, you know, it's not exactly my size, but it fit the last guy great. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Come on, we're late. Bye. Dude. News flash. Hand has a glass eye. Original lost in the war. Yeah, I know, Spicoli. That's why we only charge him half price for the movies. No. What's this about? Hour and a half. Oh, I get it. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Many Americans created places for themselves in the history books under the most adverse personal circumstances. What is it, Mr. Spicoli? Can there be something on your mind? No. <laughs> I thought not. Now, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, stricken with polio, confined to a wheelchair. Grover Cleveland, a rubber jaw. These men were leaders, though the handicaps many of you operate under will prevent you from becoming even adequate followers. Mr. Hand, I think you're really brave. I'm not quite sure what it is you are driving at. But rest assured, Mr. Spicoli, I'm keeping my eye on you. Oh. be itching again. How many people do you think he's killed? I don't know, but we better be careful, dude. I don't think he likes us. So? Gillis hand-killed a man with his bare teeth. gone too far. Well, what now? What? For what this whole glass eye business? It's totally out of control. Well, well, I'm told it's plastic. Whatever. Do you know that the kids are painting you like some kind of Rambo? Well, gee, I was hoping for a John Wayne image. Arnold, you actually enjoy being thought of as a cold-blooded killer. Mm -hmm. And the discipline has never been better. Only because the kids are waiting for you to tear somebody's throat out. Oh, Arnold, please, really, you have got to set them straight. What would you have me tell them? That I spent World War II as an air raid warden in Pasadena? You, what, 
You were never in the service? On December the 7th, 1941, I was the first in line at our local recruiting office. I can still hear the words today. Unfit for military duty because of fallen arches. Oh, Arnold, that's so sad. Really, I mean, you know, I mean, here you are, right? You're already defend your country, but then you're told you're physically defective. You've got fallen arches. That's and... enough, Leslie. All right, all right. All I'm saying is that if you continue to string these kids along and they find out the truth, they'll never believe you again. It's still safe, good. No, no, Spicoli, I said left on fairway, right on hilltop. What? Fair... I turned right on fairway. <laughs> whoa, 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 where are you going? I'm going to talk to Stacy. <laughs> no, she's the hostess. You let her come to us. <laughs> Um, Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Happy birthday. <laughs> Linda! Oh, happy birthday! Do you want diet soda? Give me the hard stuff. Ooh, sugar? Yeah. Great turnout. Look, like they're the burger people. Um, metalheads talking to the cheese girls. And like the perfect couple. And they're all waiting for Doug to be down. This whole thing is for you. Okay. No. Why? Because you wait. It's better to hang back. You look cool, you know. Just hang out here. Check out people hate on that. Just hang. <laughs> Happy birthday, Linda. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> oh, excuse me. No, Spicoli, I said left on fairway, right on hilltop. No, there isn't, there isn't a miniature golf course anywhere near here. Never approach people. You let people approach you, and then you're in total control. You're in your space, you know. So, I guess we're going to witness that big Doug event soon, huh? Look, Doug will show up when he shows up, okay? Whoa, who plugged you in? I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine. What is the problem here? Oh, that's great. Why? I'm going over here to talk to Linda. Linda, I'm coming to you. I hope Doug shows up in time for the wedding. Linda! <laughs> about Doug, huh? Doug, that's... That's all anyone cares about. No, that's not true, Linda. Yes, it is. Excuse me. Oh. Do you want to talk? I don't know. Just between us? Mm -hmm. Do you promise? Mm-hmm. Doug and I met about two years ago. He was the greatest guy in the world. Anyway, um, he gave me this. Your engagement ring? It was, it was just a friendship ring. But you told everyone that, uh... I haven't seen him for a whole year. Hey, everything's gonna be okay. No. Yeah, come with me. Hurry up, we gotta go. Gotta go just come on. Stacy, freeze! Okay, 
Excuse me? Pardon me? Gangway? Huh? Dog! Hey, you big galoot! Hey, you're in the doghouse, pal. Sure, I got a house full of people just waiting for you to happen. Oh, well, I'm no expert, but that sounds like a uh, carburetor. Well, listen, I could come and pick you up. You're in Chicago? Chicago? Chicago. Look, Doug, this is the last time you weasel out on me. And you know something else? You're not even good enough to party with my friends. That's right, it's over. Some babe just broke up with me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll be okay. These quizzes prove that very few of you are in danger of becoming familiar with American history. Perhaps some of you have been distracted by a rumor, I understand, that has been making its way through the class. This rumor has it that... A question, Mr. Spicoli? Nay, Mr. Hand. <laughs> this rumor has it that I am suffering from some sort of physical handicap which I apparently picked up in the war. I... Something in my eye. Will someone please pick that up? Oh. Oh. Thank you. <clears throat> I inadvertently dropped my chalk. <clears throat> now then, this rumor has it that one of my eyes is artificial. It's not artificial, it's plastic. I assure all of you that these are the eyes I was born with. To prove it, left eye. Right eye. I hope that satisfied everybody. Yeah. All right. Well, wow, Mr. Hand has two eyes. Buff. I never believed that glass eye stuff. Well, what about that metal plate in Vargas's head? Spicoli, Mr. Vargas does not have a metal plate in his head. It's fiberglass. Like my surfboard. Yeah. Sir Vargas. <laughs> Tonight, this country's most deadly weapon is out of control, and he must be stopped. Robert Conrad pursues the assassin tonight at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. Then it's...